Greetings, my name is Brian Carey, and I'm going to build a video game. Today we're going to learn how to take objects from Blender. These are objects with armatures and animations associated with them. And we're going to move those over into the Godot game engine. And we're going to get those working via script, and we're going to get it working in our game engine. The tools of the trade we're going to use today are Blender version 2.82a and Godot version 3.2.1. Now, to be completely honest, there are a few provisos, a few quid pro quos, a few caveats, so you're going to have to pay attention. My name is Brian Carey, and I am the Savvy Barbarian. Welcome back. Okay, as I said, we're going to work on how to get our objects with armatures, and that's the uh, the bones that are inside, or the skeletons that are inside of Blender, and the associated animations that you've put your character or object through. We're going to get those over into the Go.Dot game engine, and we're going to get all that stuff working and uh, run it through a script. This is important because armatures are one of the critical pieces of your animation toolbox. So if you're going to be doing a sword swing, if you're going to be doing a walk cycle, or just about anything else, you're going to be using armatures, and you want to build those animations. I think the, the process that's been easiest for me is to build those animations in Blender. It's really good at giving you those tools to, to make things and do your animations easily. It's meant for the artist. Then once those are built in Blender, we can just run them in Godot. And Godot actually gives us tools to blend between the different animations that we've made in Blender. But that, of course, is fodder for another video on another day. Let's jump over into Blender and I'll show you exactly how this looks. This is the construct. No, I'm just kidding. This is Blender. So uh, this, all right, this is a game asset that I've made that I'm probably going to put in to my video game. Don't steal my idea, guys. I'm trusting you. I'm, I'm showing some of the, I'm letting the cat peek out of the bag here, right? So don't steal my idea. And you're already going, your idea? You made a crate. How's this your idea? This is, have you never seen Crash Bandicoot? Have you ever never seen uh, Mario breaking blocks with his head? This crate thing is not new. I know, that's, this is true. Part of the uh, standard video game trope is to make a crate. It's a great, it's a great thing. It holds stuff or you do things with it. You can push it around, jump on it. How cool. Two of my favorite video game franchises, Portal and uh, Half-Life, make extensive use of crates, and that's partly why I'm going to use this, because mine is a little bit special, because mine does this. <laughs> that's right, my crate fights back. Let me explain, this is um, this video, we're not going to go through all the things that we're going to do to um, create the object, we're not going to make a mesh, we're not going to build the armature, or parent it, or set up the groups, or any of that stuff. We're going to assume you already know how to do all of that, if you want me to make a video on how to do all of that, that would be actually quite a few videos, and I could do that, uh, and if there's sufficient interest, I will. But at this video, all we're going to do is assume that you already know how to make an object, build the armature, you've parented the uh, armature to your object, and and you want to know, how do I uh, make the animations here? How do, I, how do I do that? What's the next step in the process? So I'm going to show you that real quick. Um, this is a really simple rig. So let me show this in, uh, let me switch to object mode, and I'm going to go over here and turn the bones on in front. So if you can see inside view, all this is, is we've got a bone here that I can use to uh, partly control the tongue. I'll use a shape key for that also. And then we've got a spine here that's just going to hold the box still, and this upper section here that's to uh, flap the top of the lid. So that's all this is. It's real simple, but... It doesn't matter if you've got two bones in your rig or if you've got 200 bones in your rig. The process is going to work exactly the same way. So we'll just start with something simple because it's easier to learn that way. So let me turn that back off. And what we're going to do to get our objects over into Godot is we're going to use the NLA editor. So if we click up here and pick a new thing here, it's called the Nonlinear Animation Editor. So give that a click. And I'll just select just the um, active objects that I'm playing with here. And what this is going to do is 
this is going to contain the different animations, right? So you may have a sword swing, you may have a walk animation, you may have a headbutt, I don't know what you're going to use. But all those different animations, all of your animations, will go here. And from there, they're all going to go over into GoDot. So let's make two of them real quick, and uh, I'll show you how that looks. So I'm just going to start here on frame number one, and I'm going to go to my armature, go into pose mode, and clear the rotation. So on frame number one, I will insert apparently nine times. No, I only need to do it one time. I'm just going to insert a rotation, and that's it. So frame one. And then let's say this is just going to be, let's just open the mouth. This will just be like a yawn. That sounds like a plan. So let's say that takes um, at 30 frames a second. Let's say it's a nice dramatic yawn here. So at frame 30, we'll just rotate that up to, how's that look? That looks pretty good. There you go. That, done. So we'll do another insert of a keyframe, and we're going to pick rotation again. And here we can see our two keyframes in the NLA editor. So everything is good. So what you're going to do is, this is named Mimic Armature Action, which is rubbish. So I'm going to double click this, and I'm going to say this is a big yawn. Excellent. So now that we've got this, what we're going to do is, this is the magic button right there. This guy, push down action. So when you push this button, to feel more powerful, you should say... By the power of Grayskull, and you should click the button. There you go. And now what we type for the name is going to pop down here. And I said to change the name when it was up here because now that it's here, I have no idea how to change that name. But this is the name right here that's going to end up in our Godot game engine. So to me, it's very important that we name these things appropriately so I can figure them out later. So if I click play here, you're going to see it's just going to play that animation. There it is. You want to see it again? Yeah, that was... It'll be scarier with music, trust me. So, let's say we want to make another animation. So, you've done your walk cycle. Let's say that was your walk cycle. And now you want to do a jump. Or you want to do a sword swing or something. So, you've pushed this action down. And now you've got this guy over here. And now you're free to do it again. You can just turn this one off. And it doesn't show up anymore. And that's nice. And then, uh, this time, let's make him do, like, uh, like he's going to do an evil laugh. So the, the lid's just going to be like, ha, 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 something interesting like that. So we'll do the same thing. I'm going to come over here to um, my side view. On frame number one, we'll do an insert of a, lo a rotation keyframe. And let's say by frame, I don't know, let's say 10, he rotate, he opens his mouth, real wide and we'll put in another rotation keyframe and at 20 he's gonna close it a little insert another keyframe and so 10 and 20 I can repeat a few times so here's I'm gonna real briefly quickly hopefully pop open my dope sheet so what I really want is just these last two keyframes I'm going to hit Shift-D. I'm going to duplicate those a couple times, like that, like that, like that. Yeah, I'm just going to leave his mouth stay open at this point, at the end of this. So let's just see what that looks like. Ha, 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 ha. That's the slowest evil laugh I have ever seen. So let's just grab all of this stuff. And uh, my cursor is here on frame one. And I'll just hit S to scale and scale that down a little bit here, make him laugh. Wee bit faster. How's that look? Ra ha 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 ha. Boy, I hope that doesn't turn into a ringtone. Okay, so there's that. So now we've got our evil laugh, and once again, we got to push this magic button right here by the power of Gray Skull. Got to rename it. So this is going to be called Evil Laugh. L a u g h. Evil laugh by the power of Grace Call Click! And now we've got an evil laugh and we've got a big yawn. So if I scrub through this, I can see him do his big evil laugh. And if I turn the other one on by clicking on this and hiding that one, you can see he's just going to do the yawn. And so you can make as many animations as you want, and you should. Any specific action that your character or your player or your villain or whatever your thing is, just keep popping those in here. 
Now, I, I suggest a couple of things here. One, I strongly suggest that the origin point of your object and the origin point of your armature are the exact same point in 3D space, right? So if you use, um, just go to set origin and change them because if they're not the same spot, I, I've just had that cause issues in Godot where um, all of a sudden the offset that I had left in there, um, it caused some strange issues for me and it was just, it just so many problems went away when the object and the armature were in the exact same spot and preferably the world origin. It just makes your life so much easier. Trust me on this one. So now that we have this uh, mimic looking all scary and doing his evil laugh and doing his big yawn or whatever your list of animations are in here, we're going to export that all over into Godot. Now you're going to have distinct um, animations here and I suggest to make it easier for you to blend them that you find like a a neutral position so it's easier so you don't like jump from one to the other however there are ways to solve that it's just gonna be smoother if you plan the start and finish of your animation so you could say daisy chain those together now Godot provides tools for how you can blend these animations together and uh, it's pretty sweet but that is fodder for another video on another day so now we're going to export this over into Godot. Um, I'm going to have a link up in the uh, corner here and uh, probably put a link down in the trumpery down below. So have a look at that video to sort of help you jump through the workflow hell that sometimes shows up when you try and transfer your objects from Blender over into Godot. It's not that bad. I think the, the uh, video is actually pretty helpful. So here we are in the Godot game engine. And as you can see, the crate came over exactly right. And uh, you can see the layout here. It comes over as a uh, spatial node here so this is this mimic this name is exactly the name of the object that we had in blender which is perfect and this skeleton here this thing named skeleton that is your armature that's the armature that you had built in blender and this actually contains all the bones and all the rotations and all the all the stuff that you had there this here is your mesh object and your mesh object in even in blender is separate from the mesh is separate from the object data those are usually two completely separate things what we've got here this guy this animation player is what stores all the animations and as you can see here look we've got big yawn right here and we've got evil laugh so we can play those guys <laughs> and the other one here is big yawn so we give that a click there raw wait so, 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 are you seeing this? Are you seeing this? Wait, have a peek at this in Blender again. This is, this is what it looked like in Blender. Huh? Huh? This is in Blender. This is what it looks like in Godot. What is that? Look at this. Before, after. See what I'm not seeing? There's no bottom teeth in this one. Where are my bottom teeth? Why did that not come over? Is like, is my mimic now supposed to like gum adventures to death? Where, why, how, you know what? I'm not upset. I'm not upset. I got this. I'm good. I'm not upset. Okay. So here's what happened. And I don't, actually think that this is a bug but this could just be my own stupid but here's here's what actually happens all right so let's jump over into uh blender again real quick and what's going on is the reason the bottom teeth didn't come over is this if i click this object we go into wireframe mode to make it just maddeningly confusing but you can see in here i've got i've got teeth in there right i don't know if you can tell that's what that is but uh, I do. So I've got a vertex group over here. It's called teeth lower. Let me select all those. And there's all my lower teeth. And th that's all the stuff that did not come over. And the reason is because once you have an armature as a parent to a mesh, then you need to have every single vertex 
in your object, in your mesh, every single one of them needs to be associated with an armature bone, at least one. If you don't have any association with an armature bone, it just doesn't come over because that's not important. So all I got to do to fix this is I, I located the uh, vertices in question and I just need to associate them with the group here. In my case, it's called spine and I'm just going to give it a weight. The spine is like the bottom of the box. So I want those to stay with the bottom of the crate. So I'll just click a sign here on the spine. And if the circuit gods are in our favor, this should all just work. All right, now back in Godot. Let's have a look here. We click on our animation player and there's, there's the big yawn and I click play. And bottom teeth for the win. Okay, so now all we gotta do is figure out how to access these animations in our Godot script. We're gonna choose the parent item here and we're gonna click this little invoke magic script button. I'm gonna accept my defaults of uh, GD script. Click create. And let's just do something really, really quick and simple. We'll just make it if I press the space bar, it'll yawn. If I press the escape key, it will do the, the evil laugh. And that's the end of it. So this is actually super easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to click, uh, we're going to type function input. And we're going to say if is action pressed. And if the action is pressed, we're going to say UI accept. That's our space bar by default. If it is, what we're going to do is we just need to reference our animation player. And we should do it thusly. With a dollar sign and animation player. Ta-da! And then we click play. Choose the one that we want to use. I'm going to hit space bar. I'm going to do the yawn. And we're done. I'm also going to put in the other one real quick, which is basically all of this exactly the same with limited changes. So instead of UI accept, I'll hit UI cancel. It's my escape key. And instead of big yawn, I'll put evil laugh. And now let's uh, save this scene. Save scene and script save script now if i go over to my world scene i'm going to click on the world and i'm going to click the link and i'm going to add my mimic tscn file and there it is now if i run this all right run let's see how that looks so if i hit space rawr. and if i hit escape key ha, 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 ha. so that runs exactly like it's supposed to oh yeah I strongly recommend using the animation player for your animations because you can hand off that labor. You don't have to figure out how to iterate everything in your process loop. Um, let, let Godot do that. Just here, animation player, go, be free, do, do what I tell you to do. Again, there are tools in Godot to, to blend your animations so you can more smoothly blend from one animation to another one. And it looks, it looks really good. Uh, but that's that's a video for another day. Well, I hope you had fun. Hope you learned a few things today. Uh, if you get a second and uh, got nothing else to do for the next 12 seconds or so, if you were to do me a solid and click the like and subscribe button, that would be that would be epic. I really uh, thank you so much for those of you who've uh, already liked and, and subscribed previous videos. Just uh, that's just wonderful. I really appreciate it. I think in the next video we're going to show you how to. Uh, use both a shape key and an armature at the same time. So um, say your character is walking and talking at the same time. Your talk, you may want to use a shape key. Your walk, you're going to be using armatures. And for some, that's confusing. Like, how do I get both of those things to happen at once? Hopefully have that video out next week. And until then, this is Brian Carey reminding you to be a scholar and a barbarian.